Uh, well, first of all, let me say the increase um, on on tobacco products, the dollar fifty a pack or dollar ten a pack, which I believe is what Senator McCain's bill does, is done not for a windfall profit. It is done to deter young kids from purchasing cigarettes. And studies have shown that if you do increase the price of of a pack of cigarettes, that it does stop young kids from smoking. And I think that's an important goal. Again, why? Because those kids, after smoking, 10, 15, 20, 30 years end up costing us as taxpayers because they end up in hospitals on Medicare, on Medicaid, and we pay their doctor bills, not even to talk about the emotional toll that it takes on their families. And I have talked to people who've lost relatives who have died of lung cancer. It is a horrendous disease. It is, it is uh, right. a, a horrible thing. And we should do everything we can to encourage children not to. But the other thing is we need to pay for the research to find out why kids start smoking so that we can counter that and keep and find ways to make them Senator, not start if, if that would work none of the kids would be smoking marijuana I mean they started to regulate marijuana in 1937 by putting a huge tax on it they drove it in the other kind of economy kids can probably buy marijuana easier than they can buy cigarettes so it, it that authoritarian approach doesn't work you're but, not going to discourage but, kids but from we smoking can pay for research at NIH and other places to Ooh, find out who's what really? it is we, all of us, it will pay us in the end to I, help kids not start it? smoking. We I are paying. For, we're paying for it now. We're paying for it when they end up in our hospitals and when we? they're when they're why seriously. Pay for it? Pay. Why should I pay for sick people who smoke and do dumb things? If you jump out of an airplane without a parachute, should I pay for it? No, I mean, why should I pay for people who do dumb things? Well, certainly, uh, I don't, don't want to do these dumb things. Was, I don't smoke. If there was a way to do the health care system to make per people personally responsible for the choices they made in their life, I think that would be take great. Take away would be the very incentive. To do. Take away the incentive that will take care of you, no matter how many dumb things you do, whether you smoke or drink, or you, if you if you ruin your liver, we'll give you a liver transplant. We'll do anything you want, no matter what your habits are like. People are going to do it. They will not be responsible for themselves. But if you go back to a 14-year-old child who who doesn't have the adult responsibility of making decisions yet, and they are targeted day after day after day after day by cigarette um, companies saying, this is a great thing to do, this is cool to do. Uh, you know, those, but up until those kids years. make those decisions based on that. We want to stop that advertising. We want to stop that targeting at our young children. Up Virginia Beach, Virginia. Let's grab a call. Good morning. <laughs> Uh, I suspect that we'll come back to this, so okay. go ahead, please. Okay, I want to say, answer something that the Republican from Texas said a few minutes ago. He said that smoking do not, the only person that involved in smoking is the person that smoke. In other words, his, uh, his smoking shouldn't bother me. I'm a truck driver, and I had a friend, a very close friend of mine, about a year and a half, two years ago, uh, as a truck driver. Never smoked a day in his life. Uh, he was he was a driver for a moving company who would probably go from the East Coast to the West Coast, where there's two drivers to a truck. During the time, he was probably sleeping in the sleeper or something. This guy that was driving would be smoking. He went to get his physical. The doctor told him, hey, you've got to leave them cigarettes alone. He said, hey, I don't smoke. You know, he never smoked a day in his life. He never wanted to smoke. Doctor said, he, you got to put this in. He said, you sure you're not smoke? You never smoke? He said, I never smoked. And the guy died about, about oh, less than a year ago. From cancer? From lung cancer. Never smoked a day in his life. And, and your point is, is the other person in the truck smoked? His smoke, he's laying back down. Oh, okay, now, now this is, this may be the cause, it may not be the cause, but if it is a problem, you don't have to come to the federal government. You go to the owner of the company and the people that you work and say, I want better working conditions. This is a private property rights. Nobody has the right to smoke any place they want. Because if I own a restaurant, if I want to have a restaurant where I don't want people smoking, I tell them not smoke. That's my prerogative. But I don't need the federal government to tell people what they can do. Go ahead, caller. I'm sorry. Two men riding together in a truck. One is back there sleeping. He can't control what this other man is doing. And, 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 and uh, you know, he, the doctor said that he smoked. He, the, the doctor did not believe that he didn't smoke. He well... Everybody who smoke, everybody who has cancer does not necessarily get, a, get it from smoke. There are other reasons you have cancer. But uh, However, I'm not saying that this is not a possibility. It cancer. may be, but I don't think you need the federal government to solve that problem. You don't need to attack 
the right of, uh, of all people's freedom to smoke and for a tobacco company to s sell tobacco in order to solve that problem. That problem can be solved in a much different manner. Conditions should be safe for workers. Well, let me give you another example. Uh, he gave you one of a, of a workplace situation where, where a, an employee got secondhand smoke. I was with a group of people yesterday talking about this issue in, in uh, Seattle, Washington, and one of the problems that was pointed out to me is daycare centers where the daycare provider smokes and the children are subject to secondhand smoke. Uh, you may not even know that as a parent when you drop your child off unless they come home and smell uh, like that. And, and people are subjected to that. The, you know, we, we need to take a look at that and say what is our responsibility and what is our obligation and what right do, do people have, what consumer rights do people have in those situations? Let me put the big issue on the table because you've been both going back and forth on, on different aspects of, of the tobacco industry. Where do you view the role of the federal government? What are its responsibilities? And then I'll ask you the same mm -hmm. question. Well, I certainly think that the federal government has a right and a responsibility to make sure that tobacco companies do not target our young children with advertisements and other T-shirts and whatever they use to get them to start smoking. But even we beyond the tobacco right issue. We have a right to protect our children. Generally, what role does the government have? Uh, the federal government... All governments um, are a way for us as a community, neighbor to neighbor, family to family, people to people across the country, to join together to put um, policies forward that help us as a nation move forward. Ron Paul? Okay, the, the question is not so much are some of these problems out there, it's whether the federal government has this authority to do it. And I say there is no way that they have any authority to do it. If they do, they might as well start on the McDonald's. Because do you think McDonald's advertised to kids? Think about what if I can prove to you that starting kids off on McDonald's and hamburgers is a hundred times worse than smoking. Well, Therefore, you have to you go after McDonald's. That, I go with you, but we know that tobacco kills. But we do know that high cholesterol diets can be detrimental to people with, that have heart problems and can develop heart trouble. So it's there. So you have to deal with the principle. You can't just say, well, it works here. You have to deal with the principle. If you can attack the tobacco companies, you have the authority to attack anybody. I mean, what about high-speed automobiles? You're always advertising young kids like high-speed automobiles. So go after the automobile companies. Go after McDonald's. Go after everybody. We do have rules and regulations regulations in this country already today to protect children. You can't make a toy and sell it to kids under three if it's something that they can easily swallow. I'm, I'm saying that there's no reason why the federal government should be involved. There's no authority. If you're going to have some of these... But then who's going to do you, it? You can do it with the state, but then again, the one suggestion I would like to make is when, whatever happened to this old-fashioned American idea of parental responsibility, which we have zero of because the nanny state has taken over and the parents don't take responsibility. They figure the government will protect us. They'll take care of the kids. They'll teach them all their habits. They'll teach them what to eat, what to smoke, what to do. I mean... Kids should be taught what is hot and you don't touch fire, so they should be taught about cigarettes and they should be taught about eating habits, not this gigantic nanny state up here in Washington. That's what the American people are so frustrated about. A couple of faxes and emails uh, from Bill Robertson who says the logic of stick it to the tobacco company program can be applied to fatty foods, alcohol, computer games, or any other legal activity that causes disease and leads to medical or other costs. Please protect us from the power of the federal government, not Joe Camel. Another view from Henry Casper says, good morning, the tobacco problem is just a cover-up on Congress's inability to do something about drugs. And a view from Michael who says this for Patty Murray, kids today are spending $17 for compact discs and $150 for Nike shoes. Do you really think that a $1.50 or $2 increase is going to deter them? Please wake up and join the real world. <laughs> Comment on any of these. Well, actually, studies have shown that if you increase the price of cigarettes, it does deter children from smoking. Does it completely stop them? Absolutely not. And that is, again, why we need to do some research to find out what does stop. And we need to tell the cigarette companies that they can't target our children with their advertising. And from Painesville, Ohio, good morning. My question for both guests, why aren't third parties allowed in the primaries? This seems unfair in our voting process. Third parties are allowed in the primary, but it's so hard to get in because the burden of collecting signatures is so great because Republicans and Democrats don't like the competition.
because policies really don't change a whole lot up here. You know, the policy of government intervention in the economy, intervention in our personal lives and habits, as well as intervention overseas, is endorsed basically by most Republicans and most Democrats. So policies never change. So they don't really want the competition. So they put the burden on the individual who's trying to get on the ballot so tough that you spend all your time and money and energy getting on, and then they exclude you from the debates. So I, I have the proposals made that would correct this. I think this would go a long way to reform, introduce the, the old-fashioned notion of competition, even in politics.